The Novels and Miscellaneous Works of Daniel Defoe The Complete English Tradesman Chapter 5 Of Diligence and Application in Business Solomon was certainly a friend to men of business, as it appears by his frequent good advice to them. Proverbs 17 verse 9 He says, He that is slothful in business is brother to him that is a great waster, and in another place. The sluggard shall be clothed in rags. Proverbs 23 verse 1 On the contrary, by way of encouragement, he tells them, the diligent hand maketh rich, Proverbs 10 verse 4, and the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. Nothing can give a greater prospect of thriving to a young tradesman than his own diligence. It fills him with hope and gives him credit with all that know him. Without application, nothing in this world goes forward as it should do. Let the man have the most perfect knowledge of his trade, and the best situation for his shop. Yet, without application, nothing will go on. What is the shop without the master? What the books without the bookkeeper? The cash without the cash keeper? What the credit without the man? I knew two negligent partners in a once well accustomed shop, who drew two ways but both in extravagance, and I heard them justly painted out as follows by an experienced trader who had grown rich by a quite contrary con conduct. Such a shop, says he, stands well, and there is a good stock of goods in it, but there is nobody to serve but a prentice boy or two, and an idle journeyman. One finds them always at play together, rather than looking out for customers, and when you come to buy, they look as if they did not care whether they showed you anything or no. You don't see a mast in the shop if you go twenty times, nor any, anything that bears the face of authority. Then it is a shop always exposed, it is perfectly haunted with thieves and shop lifters, they see nobody but raw boys in it that mind nothing so that there are more outcries of stop thief at their door, and more constables fetched to that shop than to all the shops in the street. There was a fine trade at that shop in Mr. Tradewell's time. He was a true shopkeeper. You never missed him from seven in the morning to twelve, and from two till nine at night, and he drove, throve accordingly. He left a good estate behind him, but I don't know what these people are. They say they are two partners of them, but they had as could be none, for they are never at home, nor in the shop. One wears a long peruke and a sword, I hear, and you see him often at the ball and at court, but very seldom in his shop or waiting on his customers, and the other, they say, lies in bed till eleven o'clock every day just comes out into the shop and shows himself, then stalks about to the tavern to take a wait, then to the coffee house to hear the news, comes home to dinner at one, takes a long sleep in his chair after it, and about four o'clock comes into the shop for half an hour or thereabouts, then to the tavern, where he stays till two in the morning, gets drunk, and is led home by the watch, and so lies till eleven again. And thus he walks round like the hand of a dial. And what will it all come to? They'll certainly break. They can't hold it long. Nor were the inferences unjust, any more than the description unlike, for such was quickly the end of such management. Besides, customers love to see master's face in the shop. When he cannot take the price offered, they are not disobliged, and if they do not deal at one time, they may at another. If they do deal, the master generally gets a better price for his goods than a servant can. Besides, which he is sure to give better content, for the customer always think they buy cheaper at the master than of a journeyman, as he has a property of his own goods and the journeyman is limited and cannot exceed 
as they think, the general directions of his master. Trade must not be entered into as a thing of light concern. It is called business very properly, for it is a business for life, and ought to be followed as one of the greatest businesses of life. He that trades in jest will certainly break in earnest, and this is one reason why so many tradesmen come to so hasty a conclusion of their affairs. It must be followed with a full attention of the mind, and full attention of the person. Nothing but what are to be called the necessary duties of life are to intervene, and even those are to be limited so as not to be prejudicial to business. The duties of life, which are either spiritual or secular, must not intervene with, nor jostle one another out of its place. It is the duty of every Christian to worship God, to pay homage morning and evening to his Maker, and at all other proper seasons to behave as becomes a sincere worshipper of God. Nor must any avocation, however necessary, interfere with this duty, either in public or in private. Nor, on the other hand, must a man be so intent upon religious duties as to neglect the proper times and seasons of business. There is a medium to be observed in everything, and works of supererogation are not required at any man's hands, though it must be confessed there is far less need of cautions to be given on this side of the question than on the other, for alas, so little danger are we in generally of being hurt by too much religion, that is, that it is more than twenty times for once that tradesmen neglect their shops and business to follow the track of their vices and extravagancies by taverns, gaming houses, balls, masquerades, plays, harlequinry, and operas, insomuch as this may be truly called an age of gallantry and gaiety. The playhouses and balls are now filled with citizens and young tradesmen, more than with gentlemen and families of distinction. The shopkeepers wear different garbs than what they were wont to do, are decked out with long wigs and swords, and all the frugal badges of trade are quite disdained and thrown aside. But what is the consequence? You did not see in those days such frequent acts of grace for the relief of insolvent debtors, and yet the jails filled with insolvents before the next year, though ten or twelve thousand have been released at a time by those acts. Nor did you see so many commissions of bankrupt in the Gazette as now. The wise man said long ago, He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. But nothing ruins a tradesman so effectively as the neglect of his business. He therefore, who is not determined to pursue his business diligently, had much better never begin it. Nor can a man without diligence ever thoroughly understand his business, and how should he thrive when he does not perfectly know what he is doing or how to do it? Application to his trade teaches him how to carry it on as much as his going apprentice taught him how to set it up. The diligent tradesman is always a knowing and complete tradesman. Now in order to have a man aptly, heartily, and pursue earnestly the business he is engaged in, there is yet another thing necessary, namely, that he should delight in it. To follow a trade is not to love, and not to love and delight in it is making it a slavery or bondage, not a business. The shop becomes a bridewell, and the warehouse a house of correction to the tradesman, if he does not delight in his trade. To delight in business is making business pleasant and agreeable, and such a tradesman cannot but be diligent in it. This, according to Solomon, makes him certain rich raises him above the world, and makes him able to instruct and encourage those who come after him.